We read in John 15, 8, that Jesus said, This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit. By calling us to bear fruit, Jesus calls us to be productive. Let's think about that word fruit for a moment. Jesus used that word, deployed this rich metaphor for a reason. So let's, let's think about fruit. What is the chief purpose of fruit? Well, fruit is for reproduction. The purpose of fruit is found in the seed. The whole point of fruit is that it carries the seed to produce more fruit. So let me ask you this, what kind of the, what's the fanciest kind of fruit that we, uh, that we like? <laughs> what kinds of mutant fruit do we like best? Well, seedless, <laughs> seedless fruit. We like to eat some seeds, but we throw away the seeds of most fruit. <laughs> I really enjoy apple pie. Making that pie takes some work and it usually starts with removing the skin and the seeds. We'd have an easier time, I suppose, preparing apple pie if we used seedless apples. Apparently there is such a thing, it's just not very common. The technical term is parthenocarpic. <laughs> parthenocarpic, perhaps a new word for most of us today. While seedless apples, parthenocarpic apples, are uncommon, seedless grapes and melons are, well, really common. And while we prize the mutant parthenocarpic plant that produces seedless fruit, I wonder what God thinks of seedless Christians and seedless ministries. I wonder if, if sometimes we are so focused on making our fruit tasty and appealing, focusing on the sweet flesh of it all, that we carelessly produce seedless fruit. I'd have to say that I've observed and even perpetrated seedless Christianity. There are times when we are so wrapped up in the sweet, juicy indulgence of the flesh of the thing that we produce mutant, sterile, seedless fruit. Super tasty stuff that fails to contain the seed of the gospel. Such fruit is certainly tasty, but it has no power to reproduce. If Christianity were allowed to go all seedless, then like any organism, it would become extinct within a generation. We need to be sure that our fruit has the seed of the gospel in it, the power of reproduction. Now, please hear me. I'm not knocking the sweet flesh of it all, the, the juicy goodness received from God, his power and presence, his miracles, his care and provision. That is all truly wonderful. And I say more, Lord, I want that part of the fruit. Back to the metaphor, in nature, that sweet fleshy part of the fruit plays, well, vital roles. The sweet flesh nourishes the seed. It's that bright exterior and the juicy goodness that helps spread the seed as various critters collect and consume the fruit, spreading the seed. That fleshy part of the fruit is important, but it must not merely be that fleshy part for the fruit to accomplish its purpose, for the fruit to do the work of reproduction. Yeah, revival demands requirements for preparation and responsibility for propagation. <laughs> this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit. This is our calling, that you and me and us together, we, we bear much fruit. Let's not merely enjoy the fruit of God's move. Let's take our part in the work and sacrifice and responsibility of reproduction. Let's do our part.